Because we, for us, it was difficult to connect on a personal level with this organization, even though we knew that there was a lot of story behind it and how it came here and how it created and so on. But there was no proof, nowhere to be found. Like on the website, you clearly see what they are doing, what are all the actions. But the whole story, the whole um, personality of its fundator, uh, Thais Coral, but also the whole atmosphere of Sina was kind of missing. So this is going to be our contribution to Sina. Here we go. So as you can see, uh, we decided actually to focus on three dimensions of the model. So the south, the east, and the north. We leave out the west because this is really the, the strength of Sina right now, and also of, of, uh, of Thais, like really being into the action, doing, doing, doing. And we really wanted to show you the path from the south to the north, which is the knowledge part, linking it to this creation of the School for Agent of Transformation, which is actually what is interesting for us. And also, what we thought, thought was really interesting is like how to link the theory to actually facts of real life, but also then incorporating everything which is around it. So the whole idea of sustainable development, of nature, of Brazil, of Thais, being able to create a story which reflects her personality, but also brings out all the elements of Sinal into it. So this, you are going to see it in the last part, in Mito da Criação. And also here, first, having this picture of network, it's also already reflecting a part of Thais because she's a catalysator and she brings people in networks and creates this knowledge and those kind of spaces. And also her first organization was called Regi. E a Regi is the word for network in Portuguese. So you're already kind of settling in. So the South, as we know, is like knowing our context, where we are, who we are, and also who, where we want to go. So first for the self, uh, we decided to use the life cycle in individuals and as you remember, there are four life stages or stage of development and linking that to Thais in her life, now she's actually in the phase which we call leaving a legacy. And as in one of her interviews, it was really beautiful how she uh, actually spoke about it and how she said, now I'm at a stage in my life where I kind of feel the need to find a space with a special type of energy where I'm going to be able to go deeper into myself and create this legacy. Then, to analyze the organization as itself, we use a concept which is really close, which is the life cycle in the organization. Also has four stages. And here, in analyzing Sinal, we see that it's also in the last uh, stage, the developing organization. And this means really working in harmony with the context you are in and being able to really have those relationships with, which are mutually beneficial, like no one is using the other ones, but the relationship goes back and forth. So this is the first keyword. Now we go to the east. Oh. <laughs> when we talk about the east, we talk about the culture and the spirituality. And one way to create this is like to have a shared story. It can be tradition, uh, religion, tradition. It can be uh, you know fairy tale stories about heroes. Something that connects everyone. And um, uh, Joseph Campbell, he talks a lot about the, the journey of a hero. We've heard it before already. So he leaves um, his family, his friends. He goes on a big journey, encounters some life or death situations. He comes in contact with some. Uh, supernatural stuff and uh, eventually he makes it back home and can tell everyone what happened, what's the meaning of life and so on and so forth. And we think uh, Thais uh, is one of these heroes, you know, she's been on a big journey, she was also looking for her meaning in life and, and she eventually made it back to Brazil and created all these uh, fascinating projects which uh, Sinal is one of them. And when we talk about organization, uh, about Sinal, things get a bit more complicated. What's the meaning of um, 
an organization has so many different views and ideas and to align them it's not, it's not so simple uh, because uh, in an organization it's important to make the meaning explicit you know for, if you're on your own you don't have to tell everyone you know what you what your meaning is but for organizations you have to somehow make it explicit and um, Mr. Owen he thinks a myth is one way to do this you know a shared story that everyone knows and you can tell your friends and uh, for now in their stage of transformation that they are right now I think it's really important to have a myth they, they went from pioneering where Thais was working basically on their own at the beginning uh, it was very, uh, she had to improvise a lot and then eventually when Sinal got bigger they started to standardize some processes, they, they became more efficient and now it's time to integrate, you know, make, create some synergies among these different projects within Sinal and um, a myth could uh, be like a, how do you call it, like a, a guiding tool to integrate all these different projects and yeah, for us the key, uh, key takeaway that is regard is a myth can be an immensely powerful tool to foster cultural and spiritual identity. Uh, so now we go to the northern uh, realm of development. And uh, first of all, I'll, the, nor the northern development perspective is not an unconventional one. If you think about development, you automatically think about, oh, technology or innovation and knowledge. However, is it necessary to modify and change the structure and reframe this type of knowledge? And actually, I could start talking about oh, sorry. I could start talking about cold and how it applies to the curriculum of the schools now. However, I think that Capra is very appropriate to this uh, type of connection that is present in Sinal and how all the elements they connect among each other and. Um, the hidden connections by Capra, they say that actually there is a type of ecosystem that works within the organisms or how they actually create knowledge by transferring knowledge through time and how by leaving a legacy you actually transfer knowledge and that only happens if you have a, a concrete network or a relationship that are actually stable so you need institutions, you need people and you need friends to actually create this um, basis and this network. And uh, Thais, in the sense, she's the mentor, she's not the professor, she's not the one that stands in the front of a class and explains what should they do now, but she's a, in, the mentor in the sense that she's the trigger of this whole innovation process that happens. So therefore I have the word mentor for our map. And yes, and additionally, it's um, in relation to the organization, I talk about a book um, from Margaret Lefbert, The Community Development in Action, which basically uh, talks about the theories of Paulo Freire. Uh, he's a Brazilian, so it's very good because he also relates to the culture of Sinal and the context that uh, the community is in. And in this book, actually, uh, he talks about pedagogy and how uh, and he believes that every human being has actually the capacity to see the world in a critical way, in you know, a critical view and making the world better and not actually like going away from this structure that we have now of like yeah, passive knowledge. So that was very interesting. And that's what actually happens in Sinal with um, the Living Laboratory and learning by doing. So with this kind of experiment, people go there and like, try through ecology and um, how to live sustainably and now how to go back to their uh, communities and then make a change. So that's the school for change makers. <laughs> and yes, that's the whole process of creating knowledge. And can you go and to put our whole project into context, I have to bring something uh, from Brazil. This is... Uh, first of all, the key takeaway is that we go far because we go together. It's uh, my favorite sentence from Thais, uh, because it really represents this necessity of uh, having friends in a community to actually achieve something. And that's another point that it comes in with the lyrics of this song. It's called Wave. 
It's a very famous Brazilian song, and this version is from Vanessa da Mata. <laughs> it actually uh, it tells about what I highlighted is that I think possible to feel sozinho, which means it's impossible to be happy alone. And the rest represents other values, uh, Brazilian values, such as o resto é mar é tudo que eu não sei contar. So the rest is the ocean. It's everything that I cannot count. Is everything that's beautiful. And it really talks about the waves and the ocean. So just to put some context into the now. And and what we like to do right now is share the myth we created for Sinal. I think it's really cool. We're gonna like it. <laughs> and with that, yeah. If you could close your eyes, it's really a short text, but um, it's the story of Simão. <clears throat> the world was dark and cold. A young Brazilian girl with short brown hair and icy blue eyes was wandering around barefoot. There was something mysterious about her and the people in the village had never seen her before. She was looking for something. She was looking for light, the light of compassion, love, guidance and well-being, but she couldn't find it. The people she encountered were neither hungry nor thirsty, but they looked exhausted, numb and lifeless. Full of hopelessness and desperation, she started running. She ran faster and faster straight into the rainforest. The branches and leaves were smashing into her face and left bloody cuts. Eventually, she reached a riverbank and lay down in the dirt. The mud was wet from the rain. She closed her eyes and wanted to disappear. She sensed the soil underneath her body the wind in her hair, and the rain on her face. She listened to the ripple of the river, the whispers of the trees, and the distant cries of the birds. This is a cruel world. All of a sudden, dark red flames came flickering out of the water. What was going on? She was awestruck. The sparks were looming about knee-high above the surface. The warmth and the light illuminated the entire surrounding. She waded into the water and picked up the fire with her bare hands. It didn't burn her hands. It wasn't a normal fire. It was the fire of life. The energy and joy she felt was indescribable. It was pure. She rushed back to the village. What she discovered was amazing. She could see through the chests of people and right into their hearts. Inside each heart, there was a tiny glimmering flame. And every time a person came in contact with the fire of the girl, the tiny glimmering flame turned into a firework of love and happiness. From that day on, she traveled from village to village, from city to city, from country to country. Throughout her decade-long journey, she inspired thousands, but also realized that there were too many physically and mentally crippled lives that she could not heal on her own. So, so she decided to go back to the origins of the fire. With all her life experience, the wisdom and love she gathered over the years, she lay back down on that exact spot by the riverbank. In that very instant, a bang triggered, was triggered so loud it could be heard miles away. She has never been seen ever since, but left behind an enormous blazing fire as large as an oak tree. No thunderstorm, no earthquake, and no floods could ever put that fire out. It is just as bright during the day as it is at night. Today, people from all around the globe come and visit the internal fire of love and empathy. As agents of transformation, they carry the flames to the rest of the world and bring light into the darkest corners of our planet. Ooh, and because <laughs> talking and reading is not the only artistic way of expressing a myth, you actually also have another version of it. With the first stage of the story. So now, the inspire of love, and compassion, loving, and transformation, and finally the networks building in. That was the myth. <laughs> and just we hope that you keep that in mind. So every one of you has a little candle. We didn't want it to light it here in the classroom, but to take with you and hopefully bring lights to others as well, and <coughs> as a little souvenir of the class. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>